I am sitting down because I want to um, talk, yeah, this morning. And I need to stay put. So this keeps me put. Keeps me from stomping my feet and running all over the place. And yeah, bless the Lord. Um, I have a lecture this morning. But isn't God good? Yeah, yeah. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To all our visitors, we really, really appreciate you coming and worshiping with us. We don't take that lightly. Not the worship team some. They were on the day, weren't they? Yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. We're good at telling them when they mess up, when they miss God, but today I think they, they, they spent some time with God today, yeah. Yeah, that was good, yeah. And they took us there into the presence of God, and we appreciate that. Amen. Come on, show them some love. Yeah, show them, show them some love. And, Amen. Amen. And it's just great when everything syncs up and when God moves and when God has his way and when God is glorified uh, from that. So we thank God for that. Um, just a couple of things real quick. If you have youth in here, I'm going to keep saying this over and over again. Uh, we don't want to forget that we have youth worship going on and their own services going on uh, a couple of doors down. When you first come into the center, they're doing some great things. And that's youth and middle school, and we're just excited about that. And also, like Pastor Derek said, next Sunday, immediately following service, if you're interested in connecting with our church, we're going to be having our new member class um, where we'll be going through. Um, it takes us just one session. You become a full-fledged member, and we have additional classes that we need to go on. And before I forget, um, our Easter production is coming up. Um, we're very, very excited about that. We're going to be running that for two days. It's going to be a full-fledged production so if you uh, we just want to invite you to encourage your friends to come and be a part of what we're doing we need about 10 more additional um, general practitioners and that's not the medical field um, <laughs> we just about 10 more volunteers I think it is raise your hand Trace um, see that young lady stand just tell them so they can see who you are yeah just see her uh, if you want to be a part of that she's doing a great job community to come out. Uh, we want the entire community. You don't want to miss this. Let me put it this way. Uh, this is the first time we are going this large and sparing no expense to um, prepare for Easter. So you want to see what these guys are doing. It's, I've had a chance to read the script. It is a phenomenal script. I'm just going to say that to you. It's very, very excited. Um, well written. And I'm just going to say uh, Ms. Tracy wrote that as well too. So show her some love. And appreciation, yeah. Very, very well. Um, so I think if you come, you're going to see our technical team at their best. Um, lights, camera, sound, action, everything like that. So you just don't want to miss it. And it's going to be um, Thursday and Friday uh, of Easter weekend. Did I get that right? Yeah, Thursday and Friday. So for that God would move and have his way in our midst. Amen. Um, we've been dealing with the issue of, of resolving to worship God. And... I just need you all to hear me this morning because I think this is something that we miss a lot and our worship has um, kind of skewed and deviated from that a little bit and I want to kind of refocus us and point us in a direction to really understand who God is and to really understand God from a different level. So open your Bibles and go with me to the book of Exodus. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, we've been there and we're going to be there one more week after this and I'm going to invite you to come out on Sunday morning, so, I mean, Wednesday, Wednesday evening, I'm sorry, come out on Wednesday evening to track with us so we can hear what God is saying. Um, so, I need to kind of, I made some notes for myself, um, normally I preach without notes, but I want us to kind of walk through this process to hear um, what the seriousness that God took this command that he issued to the Israelites this morning so we can walk out of here and be different people in our worship of God and who God is. So Exodus chapter 20, um, go to verse 1 if you're there and let me read. And um, just to give you a heads up, next week we'll talk about Sabbath. You don't want to miss Sabbath, we'll talk about that. Say amen if you're there so I can know you're there. Okay, good. Let's read, uh, let me read to you and then we'll pray. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Verse 3 says, You shall have no other God before me, no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved or graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5 says, You shall not bow down to them or serve them, 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And then here's the consequences of worshiping these graven image. I visit the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but show steadfast love to a thousands of those who love me and keep my commands. Verse 7 is where we're going to hang out today, just that one verse. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And here's a consequence for that. The Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes the name, his name in vain. Read that one more time. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor. neighbor. I need to hear say, neighbor. neighbor. Stop cussing. Figured that to get your attention, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> hey, we all do it. We all do. We all do. And, and it impacts our worship. And so I'm going to look at that and um, talk about it for a little while. And I'm just going to say to you, don't fool yourself into thinking you don't because you do. Um, you might not say the words that the world use, but the danger exists that we can use God's name as a cuss word. So I want to address that this morning. See why I'm sitting down? So in case lightning bolt come, hit y'all first. And <laughs> uh, but let's, let's walk this through. Let's walk through this. I just want to share um, a few things on my heart. And I want us, we need to get back there with God. We've strayed too far. And I think God wants us to come back. Now, here's the thing that I'm, I'm learning more and more um, is that I have three children. And my prayer was that um, if I had three boys, I'd be like George Foman, all Felix. But I only have two. And my wife wouldn't let me get away with that. But, um, you know, when we have children, we spend a lot of time trying to to name our kids, try to give them a name that we feel would fit them. Um, some parents even put that first name, middle initial, last name, see if it says anything. But we spend a lot of time looking at books, doing research. Um, some of us, we come up with crazy stuff. Lord, forgive us. Like some of these names, Father, help us. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we were thinking, you know. I mean, who comes up with a name like Javon, right? What in the world? No, I'm just kidding, girl. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, what in the world does that mean? We, 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 <laughs> we, we, we exercise authority um, over our children and descendants by giving them names. Now, the reason I'm saying that, I want you all to hear this with me. Um, there's nobody alive on the face of the earth who at birth named themselves. You kind of get what I'm saying? As parents, we exercise our God-given authority, and we name our children, and that in itself, by default, gives us a level of authority over the named individual. Does that make, I want you all to track with me. And, um, but when it comes to God, here's the striking thing. Nobody gave God his name. Well, better stated, no, nobody was qualified or is qualified, oh, come on, y'all, to name God. And it says something about who you are when you didn't start because you had nowhere to come from. I mean, you have nowhere to go because you're already everywhere. It says something about you when you can name yourself. Come on, I want y'all to hear me. That says a lot about who you are and about the authority that you have and, and just the way you exist and how you manifest and conduct yourself in the earth realm. So this seventh command is about God giving himself a name and the respect, reverence, and honor we ought to have for the name of God in worship. I want, come on, say amen if you're here with me. I want us to look at that. I want us to kind of hear uh, what I'm saying with you because that command opens up. Look with me. Let me read it, and then we're going to walk through it and kind of talk through it. Verse 7 of Exodus chapter 20 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God 
And it says what? Come on, repeat after me. Say, I shall not take the name of the Lord my God in vain. Now, here's what you need to know about the name of the Lord. And I kind of hinted at this last week, but I want to walk you through the scripture so we can read it. And I want you to hear the, the essence of what it really means and what it says so we can understand um, what God's name is all about. In other words, what's the name and what's the meaning of this? Now, here's what I want you to understand. God, before the creation of the earth, had his name. But what I find interesting about the name of God, he had no reason to, to reveal or to say what his name was in the earth realm until he had this encounter with Moses at the burning bush. Um, when he meets Moses, he identifies himself, interestingly enough, as the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac. But given Moses' context, Moses asked for a name. I want you all to hear me say that because you need to know the name because of the context we have. So back up with me to Exodus chapter 3. Let's just go back there, and we're going to talk about that so you can hear and see what that's all about. Exodus chapter 3, and then we're going to jump down to verse 14, and I'm going to read it, and we're going to let the text speak for itself, and we'll go back to 20 and kind of talk through um, what that's all about. Exodus chapter 3, and jump down to verse 14, and let's... Um, Walk through this together, okay? Now, for context, go up to 13. Go to 13. Yeah, let's, we, we, can't, we can't mess up the context. When you're there, say amen. amen. I want y'all to see this. Now, notice what verse 13 says. This is when um, Moses had uh, killed the Egyptian, been wandering in the wilderness for 40 plus years. God had finished his refining work in him. Now God's calling him to send him to go back in. So here's what um, Moses says I mean, to God. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and I say to them, the Lord of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me what is his name, what shall I say to them? Now notice verse 14. God literally gives Moses a name. Okay, now notice what he says first. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And then he said, say this to the people of Israel, and notice his name again. I am has sent me to you. Verse 15, then God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, and when you see capital L-O-R-D in your scripture, it's the word Yahweh in Hebrew, which is another way of saying I am. You guys are tracking with me? So I am, or Yahweh, or the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. And then here's what he says. This is my name for how long? Okay. And thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. So because of my name and who I am, he says, go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, Yahweh, or I am the Lord, or I am, or Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to me saying, I have observed you and what you have, uh, what has been done to you, where? In Egypt, look at verse 17, and I promise that I will up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk. And what's that word? Now, come on, say I am. Now, here's what I want y'all to understand that. Let me just kind of say, when you hear the word I am, if you were to do um, your work on it, it's what um, theologians will call the tetragrammaton. And all that is is just these four word Y-H-W-H, -H, absent the vowels. You guys are track. Come on, say tetragrammaton. tetragrammaton. Say it like y'all learning a big word. Come on, say, say tetragrammaton. And that's Y-H-W-H, and what some translators have done or some other, other individuals to kind of help us pronounce this thing, they've added the vowels A and E so we can say Yahweh, which simply means I am. Now, here's what you need to know. That is literally God's name. Okay? Now, what's striking about the name of God, here's what I said to you last week. In Egypt, 
They were a polytheistic nation, which means that they had a God for everything. The word poly meaning many and theos meaning God. They had many gods, okay? So they had a God for the sun, the rain, the moon, the this, that, and the other. The problem with the gods in Egypt is that their name restricted them to the thing that they did. You kind of get what I'm saying? So if you wanted to access the God, the, the God over rain, you had to use the name rain in the word so you could know exactly who you were speaking to. Okay? If you wanted to speak to the God of fertility, that was a different individual, and you had to address them by his name, and that God was stricted to only causing fertile things such as rain and sun to happen in the earth realm. You kind of get what I'm saying? And on and on and on and on. So here's Moses. Moses encounters God now, and he says to him, God, you must understand, I am from Egypt, and we have a God for everything. I mean, we, we've got, you, you name it, we've got it. So... Where do I fit you in in the list of gods when I go to the Israelites to say to him that this God has come to me because you must understand they spent over 400 years in Egypt so all they know is this polytheistic place. So here's what God said to him. I am that I am. Now here's what that word means and I want y'all to get this. In other words, I will be who I will be. Let me help you all with that. So Moses, here's what you got to understand. I can't restrict myself to doing one thing because I can do everything. Oh, I wish I had. I wish I had. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't restrict myself, Moses, just to being the God over fertility or the God over this or the God over that. So if you need to know who I really am, I'm the boss of your gods. Oh, well, I wish I had. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, I am self-sufficient. I am self-existent. Before anything existed, I am. And, and, and the beautiful thing about that, that verb to be in Hebrew is that Moses, even though you see me now, tomorrow I'll still exist and the day after that. So I continually become whatever you need me to be at the time you need me to be it. Come on, I wish I had somebody here. I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same today. I'm the same tomorrow. So my name is is Yahweh, meaning I am, or capital L-O-R-D. You name it, I can do it. So check this out. Y'all know this, and I'm going to move on, okay? The whole battle of the plagues, and I've said this before, but repetition is good for learning. Um, Moses, um, you know you guys have a God for the serpents in Egypt, right? Yeah, we do. Okay, put your hand on your thing. I mean, what's that in your hand? The staff, right? And he said, take the staff, drop it, what happened? See that God on the ground? That's the Egyptian God. I can make that. Now, Moses, here's what your Egyptian God can't do. Let me show you how I can dominate your Egyptian God. Pick it up by the tail. Whoa, what happened to the Egyptian God? I consumed him. Take your hand, Moses. Stick it in your thing. And he pulls it out and it's what? Leprous is slow. Are you with me? So in Egypt, you guys got a God for this and you got a God for sickness. Now, but the problem with your gods is your gods don't know how to reverse the process. So stick it in again. So here's what I want y'all to understand. That encounter with Yahweh Elohim gave Moses the confidence he needed to know that he encountered the true and the living God. Because God showed him that he is the God over all the gods. In other words, when you call my name Moses, don't put a small G next to it. Respect me. Put a big, come on, I wish I had somebody in here. Because I still am the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, I'm the creator. I, I, want, I am that I am. And I, whatever you need me to be at the time, I can become it. Yahweh. Come on, say Yahweh. Say it again, say Yahweh. Now, here's the thing. Here's the other thing with names. So, my name is, is Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, um, Yahweh Elohim. That means the supreme and living God. Not only does a, did he give Moses his name, but here's the other part about name. The name revealed to Moses who God actually was. His character existed in his name. Oh, I want y'all to hear that. If I were to use the name, let me use my own name, Felix. You can go throughout the earth. My name does not define my character. 
I've seen Mexican Felixes. I haven't seen a white Felix yet. I've seen Puerto Rican Felixes. I haven't seen an Asian Felix either. Black Felixes. I've seen all kinds of Felixes. And grandma's term. Every last in one of them look different. And they behave different. One might love well. One might not love well. One might have a pass. One might not have a pass. In other words, the name did not dictate the character of the person. Here's what you need to know about my name, Moses. My name tells you who I am. Love is not what I do. Love is who, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all get this, y'all get this, y'all get this, y'all get this, y'all get this. So on and on and on. I don't need to bore you with details. You can put your own application on that. So the moment you mention my name, you have a revelation of my character. I am gracious. Not that I want to be gracious. Graciousness is who I am. I am a gracious God. I'm a loving God. I am a caring God. I am an understanding God. My name reflects my character. So here's what Hebrew means in the Hebrew language. Whenever a name was assigned to a person and you heard their name, you can expect them to behave or be a reflection of what their name is. Let me help y'all with this. Here's, um, which one was it? Was it Jacob and Esau in Esau in his mother's womb? And um, remember Jacob's name was what? Trickster. And if you were to do your etymological or background word on the word, uh, background work on the word uh, Jacob, you'll find out that it comes down to being trickster. Remember? And, and on and on and on, Eve was named Eve because Eve in Hebrew is red earth, meaning she was taken from the earth. Moses' name was called Moses because Moses means drawn out. He was drawn out from the well on and on and on and on and on and on and on. In Hebrew, your name reflected your character. So when you use God's name, I'm saying this for a reason, you are invoking certain character traits. Hear this out that only God can do. Don't forget that statement. When you invoke God's name, you're communicating behaviors, traits, and things that only God could do. So here's the text says, based on that premise, do not take the name of the Lord your God what? Because you're going to invoke some things or release some things <laughs> that only God could do. So here's, here's, here's the literal Hebrew translation, right? Do not lift up. Do not lift up the name of God. Here's what vain means. Into nothingness. Say it again. So, so do not release my name into the atmospheric realm, into nothingness, and don't expect nothing to happen. Ah, Jesus, Jesus. I want us, I want us, I want us to get this. So he says, so, so, so in other words, don't, 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 don't release from my lips. Don't release from your mouth. Don't release into the atmosphere as well the name of God in vain. Don't use it for your own malicious intent. Don't use it for your own foolishness. Don't use it for your own crazy stuff. Only use it in accordance with my will, my purpose, and my divine intent. Come on, say Yahweh again. So, so here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. There's a lot of, if you were to look, most Orthodox Jews, they would, they would revere the name so much that because they understood the essence of what was involved in invoking the name of God, they won't even pronounce the word Yahweh because they revered it so much. Now, here's what I want you to know. That was not the heart of God. God is not saying, don't call my name. He wants us to call his name, but he wants us to use it in the right way so when his name is released, his character is seen. Come on, it's just making sense, guys. 
I want you to hear me. So name goes with character. See, stop cussing. Um, name goes with, with, with character. I want you all to hear, hear me say that. So, so here's the thing. There are three ways. There's three ways um, some commentators say, and I, I'm agreeing with them, that we can misuse the name of, the, of God. So here's, here's number one. Um, in sorcery. Now, I'm, I'm from the Caribbean. So in the Caribbean, we have this thing called voodoo. Y'all got the same thing here. Y'all just call it Ouija boards and stuff like that. The whole premise of that sort of witchcraft is that when you are engaging in the witchcraft, you invoke the name of a deity, and listen to this, and you're trying to manipulate the deity to respond to something in the earth realm. And there are certain people that have certain giftings. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That, that they feel they can access the spirit realm. And so they'll say, come to me. And they'll take you into the spiritual realm. Be it voodoo, be it this Ouija board, be it witchcraft. Whatever the situation is. And they would invoke the name of a deity. Be it a, 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 a demonic thing or whatever your God is. They would call that thing down and expect it to respond. And they would communicate to you what they thought the God said. Witchcraft. Let me be black and white with you. God said, don't involve me in that foolishness. Because you can't manipulate me. Come on, come on, come on. You can't manipulate me. Okay? Now, now here, here's New Testament. Be careful with that. Because a lot of us go to people to hear what God is So this is what it looks like. Whatever it looks like, I'm going to seek God on your behalf. No. Teach them to seek God for. Because if I've got to set up something for me to be your God representative, I might just be engaged in some form of witchcraft where I'm calling down God to talk to me so I can tell you, I wish y'all don't like me now. And God says, nobody can manipulate me. Don't call my name in the midst of your foolishness because you risk saying what I didn't say. Witchcraft, number one. Second one, prophecy. This is dangerous. Now, let me give you a caveat. I want you all to hear me carefully because somebody's going to say, here he go again. I believe in prophecy. Are we clear? For the record, I believe in the prophetic gifting. I believe the prophetic gifting is in sta extent and it's, it's credible and it's valuable for today. I don't have a problem with the prophetic gifting. I have a problem with people. I'm gonna get in trouble but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you gotta pay a hundred dollars to hear what God said. Somebody is not prophesying, they're prophesying. Yeah. So here's God. Don't use my name for your own personal gain. Okay? So, so, so here, here's the thing I want you to get to say. So here's how it looked in the Old Testament. Here's what would happen in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, here's the, the word. If you prophesied, and what the prophet said did not come true, guess what happened? Yeah, they stoned you. Every church ought to have a pile of stone in the back. <laughs> I, I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. Because in today's day and age, the prophetic ought to align with what God is already saying to you. It ought not be fresh or new revelation. God should have already spoken to you. And when you hear thus said the Lord, you're agreeing and it's resonating with your spirit. Come on, talk to me, somebody in here. Because if you've accepted Christ in your life as personal Lord and Savior, the priesthood right of the believer says God exists in you. God speaks to you. You might just need confirmation from a brother or sister because you don't know how to hear God well for yourself. So when they speak prophetically it affirms you man that is God I want you to hear me I want you to hear me but even in prophecy there is order are you guys hearing me this morning 
Even in his prophecy, there is order. Okay, so 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 um, let me give this. Well, I'm gonna come to that in a little while. Here, so so um, voodoo or falsehood or sorcery prophecy, and then here's the third one: false oath. This is this is this is critical because, in other words, don't lift up my name into nothingness. Don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And you've seen this before, man. I swear on the name of the Lord, I'm gonna do it. So help me God. I'm going to do it. So remember when you release the name of the Lord, you're invoking God's character into the atmosphere as well. So hear this carefully. Nothing's so much wrong with saying, so help me God. The problem is when you release his character and you act against it. So in other words, so help me God, I'm going to get a loan and pay the bill. Then you file for bank. Leave that alone. Then you do something against, or you lie, or you not tell the truth, or you just said it to deceive the person so they could believe you, but you had no intentions on living it out. Don't take God's name. Does this make sense, guys? In vain. Okay, now, now here, here's, here's the third thing. You know his name, you don't take it in faith. Here's the third thing, and I'm almost done. Um, the Lord will not hold guiltless, this is the last part of that verse, verse 7, those who use his name in vain. Let me tell you what that means. There's consequences for misusing the name of the Lord. Are you hearing me this morning? There's consequences for misusing the name of the Lord. And let me tell you what this looks like. It's kind of like the best illustration I can think of is, is copyright laws today, right? Um, Under Armour has their little logo that they use. Nike has their little logo that they use. Uh, Apple has their symbol that they use. The same with Microsoft. The same with um, uh, Reebok. The same with all these athletic companies. Now, here's what they did. They copyrighted that logo to say that if you ever use this without our permission, there's consequences. Because watch this. When you use our symbol, you are releasing our character over the thing you're trying to brand. Well, God copyrighted his name. So, so here's what he said. Don't go around walking around with God, my name on your stuff. Because when people see my name, they expect to see me. I see. I said I wasn't gonna get up. Let me sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting down. Yeah, I, I said. Yeah, I, I want to get through this. I want to get. Through. I'm gonna sit down. Yeah, I need a seat belt because I said, you know, um, <laughs> when, when when they see my name, they expect to see me. So if you're walking around and my name is, if if you have the nerve to attach my copyrighted emblem on who you are, and people don't see my character coming out of you, you are positioning yourself for the consequence of infringement on copy. Copyright laws. And here's what he said. I'm going to get mine. You crazy enough to try to call me into your foolishness and make me look bad? I'm going to protect my name. I wish I had somebody up in here. There's consequences. I don't have time to turn here, but listen to this. There was a story in the book of Leviticus of, of this half-breed. It was a Jew and Egyptian, and um, he got, it's a male, he got involved with a fight. Uh, and in the midst of the fight, and I don't think this was a literal fight, I think it was a verbal argument, but he messed around and he used Yahweh um, and he cussed. It's a little thing, y'all get a chance to go read that, okay? And so the people were like, ooh. We're going to tell Moses. And this hadn't happened before because they were living by the law. So they go and they tell Moses, Moses, he, he used God's name in vain. What is we going to do? And Moses said, let's seek God. And they prayed and they put him in prison. They literally did while they were waiting for God to speak. And God said, okay, here's what you're going to do. Warned y'all. 
So every person who heard what he did, take him outside the camp and stone him to death. That's the extreme God went to keep the standard in his community. Is this making sense? To protect his name. I want you all to hear me say that. So, so the thing is, God takes his name seriously because his name is a reflection of who he is and it's a reflection of his character. So the question is, how should I use God's name and what's the proper usage of God? God listen to this quote by John Calvin. I want you all to hear this quote and then I'm going to say some things about it and we'll be done. The purpose of this commandment is what John Calvin said. Is God wills that we hollow the majesty of his name. Therefore, it means in brief that we are not to profane his name by treating it contemptuously or irreverently. To this prohibition um, duly corresponds the commandment that we should not be zealous, that we should be zealous and careful to honor his name with godly reverence. Therefore, we ought to be so disposed in mind and speech that we neither think nor say anything concerning God and his mysteries without reverence and much soberness. That is, estimating his work, we conceive nothing but what is honorable to him. Here's what we do when we get upset. Jesus Christ. That's what we do. God, fill in the blank. Or we leave off his, just out of the blue. See, I told y'all everybody in here done did it. And, and, and we're invoking his presence. Well, let me say this way. We're lifting up his character into nothingness. Because when we say it, it's not when we're happy. We're all bent out of shape, and we release it into the atmosphere, and people look at you expecting to see God, and they see you. Christian folk. I'm talking about me too, so don't feel so bad. <laughs> Guess what I ain't going to do no more. <laughs> kind of get what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? And whatever der der uh, derivation, whatever form, whatever shortened, whatever, even if you're trying to hint at it, don't release the name of God into nothingness and not be a reflection of his character. Are you hearing me, guys? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? In the Old Testament, when they heard Yahweh, they expected to see a people that was going to be victorious, that had him, this is the Old Testament, this is my thing, in the box with him. And when they heard the name of God, there was fear and trembling on the other side because they know the enemy was about to be defeated because God had showed up. Come on. When they heard the name of the God, the Philistine trembled, the Amorites trembled, the enemies of the people of God trembled. Matter of fact, check this out. When he showed up in bodily form, he didn't even have to say his name, but when the demon encountered him, it says demons tremble at the what? Sound of his name because his name ought to be revered. Now here's the church. We so misuse his names that the demons look at us and because they now know it has no power because we've lifted it up in vain so much. It's like the child who had the dam that was leaking or acquired wolf so much. Come on. That when it comes time to be serious, it doesn't mean nothing because it just sounds like another word that we've been using all the time. So getting to resolving to worship. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 10. When you pray, open up like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And don't hurry past that. God, you're awesome. You have a name that's above every name. And you place that name where it rightfully belongs. God, lay your name over me. 
and you worship him in the beauty of his holiness for his name because he has a name that's above every name. And you worship him for that. Here's how David said it in Psalm. Let me just list a couple of Psalms. He says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Okay, that's in Psalm 29. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Praise be to his glorious name forever. Praise the Lord, O my soul, in all my being. Praise his holy name. Here's what it says in Genesis. Call on the name of the Lord to prophesy in the name of the Lord, to trust in the name of the Lord, and in every way to revere the glorious, awesome name of the Lord. Here's my word of caution, then we're going to stop. If you're crazy enough, and, and I'm saying this with caution, and I want you to hear me with caution, to use God's name to tell somebody, God told me to tell you. And you're not, you don't have enough stick to itness to stay with the person to see it come through true or you don't know if it's going to happen or not, you are positioning yourself for the consequences of using God's name in vain. Better to say, I sense God saying, <laughs> that'll save you a few stones. <laughs> because a lot of time we have promptings. You come on, y'all. A lot of times we're in prayer and we think we heard something. Come on, let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of time, and there's hit and miss in this situation. Let me just be honest with you. Sometimes you know this is God. Sometimes you're not sure it is God. But if you're crazy enough every single time to be that confident to say it's God says, and you use his, you release his character and it doesn't happen, you just lied on God. Don't play it. Matter of fact, to be safe, are you hearing the same thing? <laughs> don't act like you're God. No, no, I know you're wrong, God. Talk. No, no, don't be that crazy. Train people to hear God, then be the prophetic that affirms. Are you hearing me? Be the prophetic that, you, that affirm. It might be the burrito you got from the truck outside. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I just... Y'all pray. I'm just crazy. Some good tacos, though. <laughs> Revere his name. Revere his name. His name is holy. Now, let me say this, and I'm going to stop. His name is Yahweh, okay? The Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H. How he reveals himself is your descriptive to what Yahweh did. Let me illustrate. When he showed up as the ram in the bush for, is it Abraham? He said, Yahweh, Ro, I mean, Jireh, or Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Okay? Um, when he showed up to David as in the midst of his storm, Jehovah Rohi, God my shepherd. When he provided a banner for the Israelites as they were going through, they referred to him as Jehovah Nisi, the God, my banner, or my shield. When he showed up or revealed himself as a righteous God um, to the Israelites, they call him Jehovah Sidkunu, God, my righteousness. You kind of get what I'm saying? The point I'm making in all of this is every person in here ought to have their own descriptive of what Yahweh did for them. If you're living your life in someone else's descriptive, you haven't met God yet. So for me, he brought me out of cancer, so he's Jehovah Rophe, my healer. You kind of get what I'm saying? And, and, and when I use that name, it's kind of like Moses, put your hand in and pull it out. You can't convince Moses of what can't do, God can't do. Guess what you cannot convince me that God can't do? Are you hearing me? Because I have encountered him in my own way. What is your descriptive? There have been times where I didn't know where food was going to come from, and he was Jaira. Come on, there were times when the bills was due, and the money wasn't there to provide, and he was provider. Come on, what has God done for you that you can ascribe to his name or is your relationship built on someone else's descriptive 
forget your own name. And the only way you do that is by spending time in him and by revering his name. Here's what I said jokingly at the onset of the message. Stop cussing, right? Here's what that means. Stop releasing the name of the Lord into nothingness and expect him to act. When the word is released, his character is released. And God will act. God will do. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. As the worship team makes their way to the platform, I have a short video I want you guys to look at. And then we're going to pray. Let me, let me pray, and then I'm going to let that play, and then we're going to allow God to have us. With. God, you're awesome. Your name is wonderful. Forgive us for blowing it. Remind us of who you are. So we worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. We give our time to you, God, in your name. Forgive us. Forgive us. We ascribe never to do that again to your name. We're going to hold it in high esteem. In your name we pray. And watch this video real quick. 